And that's why it's always best to understand these things, not just jump into it, but all these SARMs companies are selling you these things without telling you. What is up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elon Muscular and in this video we're going to be talking about human growth hormone administration frequency. So human growth hormone is something that a lot of people use at the highest levels of society. Actors take it to get into the best shape of their life for movie roles. Athletes take it to help stay in the game longer to regenerate their joints and keep them healthy while they do you know, drastic levels of physical activity. Human growth hormone is one of the best regenerative compounds that we have that can help us with our long-term health as well as building up muscle mass and decreasing fat. One example of this to kind of prove my point and illustrate it is that in 2007, Sylvester Stallone, which we all know him from the Rocky movies, was arrested in Australia trying to smuggle in large amounts of human growth hormone. Was he smuggling it to sell? Probably not because he's a famous actor. He wanted it for himself because he knows about the benefits of human growth hormone and it helps him stay in amazing shape at 70 years old. So the problem with most bodybuilders, in my opinion, when it comes to their long-term health, is that they abuse anabolic sex steroids. They take sex steroids, way too much of them, a gram, two grams, three grams. And when I was experimenting with these strategies a couple of years ago, I started to feel like shit. Every time I took my anabolic load over a gram, I felt really, really bad side effects. And last year, when I got back into bodybuilding, I started to do more research and think, what other pathways could there be so that I can get my goal of having you know, a great level of muscle mass with a low amount of fat, and how can I do that in a healthier manner that does not make me feel like shit? That's when I found out about human growth hormone and started to dig into all this research. Now, human growth hormone is not cheap, and when you're using it, you wanna be as economical as possible to get the most out of it so you don't drive yourself bankrupt and have to be ripped and homeless. So in my research, I started to uh, look into it and see, hey, is this something maybe we could take it five days out of the week? Maybe we could take it every other day. Is it possible to get good results without having to take this stuff every day? Because, you know, the price adds up the more you take, obviously. So I came across this study that was conducted in Korea in 1994, and they actually looked into just that. They looked into administering human growth hormone at 4 IU, so that's a, you know, a great dose for bodybuilding for seven days out of the week, so every single day, or uh, three times a week, so not even every other day, just three times a week. And then they measured how much that affected their muscle mass and their IGF-1 levels, as well as their fat mass. So this is a great study for bodybuilders that want to get more out of the human growth hormone that they have and prioritize their finances in a way that helps them get to their goal uh, in a more sustainable manner. So let's jump right into this study. This is a summary of the study posted on antiagemedical.com and I will link the full study in the description below. But we'll look at the summary because it puts it down in a much easier bite-sized way that we can really just take what we need from it without having to deal with all that scientific jargon which is confusing to me and I'm sure would be confusing to many of you as well if you don't have a PhD in biochemistry. So like I said, group one was given four IUs three days out of the week, and group two was given four IUs seven days out of the week. Now the results were very interesting. The three-day group gained 2.8 kilograms of lean muscle mass, and this is over the course of the year, only supplementing with this growth hormone. So no other exogenous steroids, no training or anything like that. These were growth hormone deficient people that were being given these dosages. So because they were growth hormone deficient, they had loss of muscle mass that happened over time. So by bringing their growth hormone levels back up, their muscle mass started to come back. So can this be perfectly applicable in a bodybuilding scenario? Probably not, but it still gives us some very useful information. So in terms of muscle mass, the group that took the three shots as opposed to the seven shots, they gained virtually the same amount of muscle mass over the year. Not a significant difference. 2.8 kilograms versus 2.9 kilograms. So this can show that, you know, taking, if you're looking to take HGH in order to build more muscle, you don't actually have to take it every day. You can only take it three days out of the week. And this is because when it comes to building muscle, what 
human growth hormone does is make your body release more IGF-1. IGF-1 is insulin-like growth factor, which is really gonna be the main contributor to increasing your muscle mass. Now, there have been other studies done where they had lower dosages of growth hormone, like three I use a day versus six I use a day, and what they see is cutoffs when it comes to the increasing of IGF-1 and diminishing returns past a certain point. So by taking it every other day at this you know, relatively healthy high dose of four IUs a day, they managed to get relatively the same increases in IGF-1 and the same increases in muscle mass without having to use the growth hormone at a much higher dosage over the period of time. Now, where the three-day group fell flat against the seven-day group was reduction of body fat. And the reason for this is that human growth hormone injected exogenously has a short half-life in the body. And while it's active, it's gonna be re releasing your fatty acids so that they can be burned off, right? So the more times that you inject it, the more times that you can release these fatty acids. Now they found in other studies that any dosage past two IUs doesn't have an increasing effect in terms of releasing the fatty acids. So taking four IUs is not gonna necessarily reduce more fatty acids than taking two IUs. So for fat loss, the best thing would be to take anywhere between 1.5 to two IUs as many times throughout the day as possible. And in contest bodybuilding, what we see is that they will typically take you know, 1.5 to two IUs three to four times a day during a dieting period. So they constantly have this release of free fatty acids and get the fat loss benefits of human growth hormone. Now this is different than the muscle building uh, benefits of the IGF-1, which happens systemically and just comes up even at three days, at seven days, and at various different dosages. So the way that HGH works when injected exogenously in terms of building muscle is very different to how it works when it comes to burning fat. So the more times that they inject it, the more fat that the people lost. Now the next thing that was really interesting was lean thigh mass and exercise capacity. What they found is that the people that injected growth hormone three times a week actually had more strength gains and better exercise capacity than the people who injected it seven times a week. Now they weren't exactly sure why this happened, but they saw greater growth in the legs specifically and just greater athletic performance overall in the people that actually injected the growth hormone less often. And in this study, when it comes to bone mineral density and cholesterol, they didn't see an improvement in either one of those. Although in other studies, human growth hormone has shown benefits in these two areas. So what they concluded with this study is that when you inject growth hormone super frequently, your body can actually build up HGH resistance. But what's important to understand is that this study was conducted with 192 amino acid HGH, not 191 amino acid HGH. So 192 amino acid HGH, the body can become resistant to it, whereas 191 is exactly the same that we have within our body naturally, so it can't become resistant to it. So it was a slightly different compound than what's available today because this study was conducted in 1994 with Korea, in Korea, and that is what they had access to. And when they administered it more often with this 192 amino acid HGH, what they actually found was that people were starting to become resistant to it faster the more times they administered it, and that's why their exercise performance was going down as opposed to the three-day group. group. Now, 192 and 191 have pretty much the same effects in terms of increasing growth hormone and IGF-1, so I wouldn't worry about any of that stuff. But when it comes to uh, desensitizing to it, I don't think, based on the research that I've done, that that is a problem with the 191 amino acid that is more popular today. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope you learned something from this video. And I hope that you know if you are using human growth hormone, that this video can help you get a better bang for your buck if your goal is to put on muscle mass. Me personally, I do like the three times a week administration pre-workout because I find that human growth hormone really helps me with the intensity of my workouts, the pump, and the way that I look while I'm working out which helps me build up more muscle mass in the long term. I don't think that using human growth hormone to lose fat is really a great idea because there's a lot of fat burning substances and obviously you can just burn fat through a caloric deficit and doing cardio and all that stuff doesn't cost hundreds of dollars. So unless you're a professional bodybuilder, if you're just using this for you know enhancing your own physique for your own longevity and in, to enjoy your life, I would not recommend a everyday dosing pattern. Well, I'm not making any recommendations at all, just me personally, what I prefer to do is a three times a week dosing pattern with a more bolus dose like four I use. And this study really backs that up really well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
If you like the video, like the video, comment, subscribe, share the video so other people can have access to this information and don't waste their time and money. And if you're interested in personal guidance from me backed up with all this research, head over to elonmuscular.com and book a free coaching session with me where we can chat for 30 minutes and make sure that you have the best protocols for your goals moving forward. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.